I'm going to do it for my phone. I don't know why my computer is running so slowly, but there it is. Um, I wanted to pop on. I'm so sorry. Oh, here's my screen. I was going to apologize in case you're watching and I can't see you. If you're here, give me a shout. I'm trying to um, see myself. <laughs> um, and what I want to do is address a question that came on my blog post recently um, that I think is relevant, that I see a lot. Some version of... If you're here, give me a shout. <laughs> now I'm listening to myself. I certainly don't want to do that as I'm talking. Um, you can hear that there's a delay, though. I'd love to see my video, though, to see if anybody's here. Um, all right. I'll just... I, I can't see you if you're here but I appreciate you for being here. Give me some love. <laughs> I can't see. So I'm going to just read this post and then maybe it'll catch up. I'm going to have to flip over to my, the actual question. And I wanted to address this question about not feeling like enough in your relationship because it comes up a lot and it can be very lethal if you let it. It doesn't have to be. Okay. So the person writes, hi, I've been married to my husband for going on 18 years if you're just jumping on now, I can't see anybody. I'm just reading the screen. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to tell you that I can't see who's here. Uh, I've been married to my husband for, on, for going on 18 years. He's done a lot of stuff that I forgave, and I'm still forgiving. But just recently, we had an argument, and I told him I felt like someone that he's just settling for at this point. His response to, his response to me was, well, if you feel like that, or if you feel that way, then leave. Then he responded again, saying, if you truly feel like that. Why are you sticking around? So with that, my response was, I'm not sure. I've been asking myself that question for 19 years, and the only answer I can come up with is that I love you. He had no response after that, and we're still not talking. How should I feel about the response he gave me? Because I'm feeling that I should really leave. Do you think that is something out of anger for him to respond that way, or am I just overreacting? I, I don't really understand the question so much. Um, you're going to feel however you feel about the response that he gave you, but I get the sense that there's something unsettled about your feeling in terms of the response that he gave you. Um, and when you talk about feeling that you should really just leave, my question is why? Why do you feel like you should leave? Um, so we could go on and on about this and have a deeper discussion about it, but since I have the limited information I do have, I want to talk about um, this feeling that questioning, you know, am I not good enough for my partner? I'm going to try to pull this up on my screen just to see if anybody's there. Um, if you feel like you're not good enough for your partner and your partner, you know, knowingly married you, um, that's, uh, that can be an issue. Um, because you can act from that place. Why isn't this showing up? Sorry, I don't mean to be distracted. I need to, I'd love to, um, be able to see this, but, um, that can be an issue if you allow it to be. Um, for one reason, and I, I think maybe this might be where that he where he's coming from, is that, you know, it's really hard. Um, you know, they say you have to love yourself before somebody else can love you. I take a different stance on that than than is widely accepted that you have to love yourself first. Now, while I do believe you have to love yourself enough to allow somebody to, you know, love you or whatever, I mean, I think that we are kind of born into this world with love, right? Or we just have, I mean, as like infants, we're just uh, basically, you know, we just take it, we just suck it in, we absorb it, we need it. It's just part of, you know, how we come into this world as social mammals. So I'm kind of, I'm still looking for myself here because I would love to be able to see if anybody's here. Um, but with this, you can really create a wall between there I am. Okay, cool. So people are here. Give me a shot if you're here. I, it's it's a little bit um, slow. Uh, so anyway, I, I might not be able to see. Bear with me. All right. But I'm glad I can kind of see. Oh, good. Tara says, what have I missed? I don't know when you said that. My, well, you've missed that my computer is, is acting like a, you know, a little bit slower than usual today. But basically the person wrote in, I don't know if you've heard this, and she said, said that, you know, long history with her husband um, at, basically asks, you know, why are you with me? I feel like you're settling. And he says, well, then just leave. And what I'd like to say is that, you know, to this question, by not feeling like you're, you know, enough, that can really put a wall between you and your partner. 
right? And basically what I imagine your husband might be experiencing, and I could be wrong, but it's almost like you're not accepting his truth. His truth is that he loves you. And when you don't feel lovable or you don't feel worthy of that love or you feel like he's settling on some level, you're allowing, got it, thank you, awesome. I'm, I'm not even going to like, maybe I will like, I was going to avoid, thank you for being here, Tara. I hope you're doing well. Um, I wasn't even going to like because things are just stalling so much. But basically by putting up a wall like that and by saying, um, you know, it's almost like, Okay. It's almost like in some ways it might feel to him like you're fishing in a way, like, like, like he wants you to say, or you want him to say all these wonderful things, but it may feel futile to him if you don't feel like, if you don't already know that after 19 years of marriage, you don't already know that this man loves you. It might feel like to him, like, what's the point of even bothering? And he gives up really quickly. Now, when you're saying, well, because I love you, I wonder what you're looking for, right? In a way, there's a little bit of a thing going on, like, you know, do I look fat in these pants kind of thing, right? I mean, it's kind of the same thing where, you know, you're, you, it's, 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 you're coming at it from a kind of protected place. And that's what I get the sense of when you say, well, maybe I should just leave. That's a really protective thing to do. When things get difficult, it's easier to just, you know pack up and move on. And I think that's a lot of the, um, that's a lot of what's being, you know, suggested that people do with a lot of things. And the real work is in figuring out what's really going on and not running away from it. I'm not saying that you guys are, you know, meant to be forever and ever. I obviously don't know you. I just know a couple lines that you wrote in my blog post, but I hope that's helpful in any way. The question is when you're not feeling enough in your relationship, I think the real magic happens when you can allow yourself to take in your partner's truth about you. Again, you know, there's this idea, idea that you have to love yourself before anybody can love you. And it certainly goes a long way. Okay. But like I was saying before, we, we are, we come into this universe and this world in relationships. That's how we learn who we are in relationships. We're connected in that way. And so for a lot of people, there was a lot of damage that was done in relationships, in early relationships. People don't necessarily always get what they need, right? And so as a result of that, they may develop ideas like, I'm, you know, somebody is settling for me. I'm not worth it. I'm not good enough, right? And so Tara says it is the hardest thing to do to stay and be vulnerable, especially if your tendency is to leave. It's so hard. And you can apply this to any kind of anything that you do, not just relationships. You can apply it to jobs. You can apply it to work. You can apply it to businesses, you know? Um, but the thing about relationships that I think is, um, I don't know. I think it, it's catching on obviously, but, um, to allow, you know, we are so influenced by each other, right? And we do have to, you know, we do have to recognize that it's really up to us and that we can, you know, do whatever we want. And, you know, we are all worthy of love. And, you know, as the saying goes, there's nobody on this universe that deserves as much um, or that deserves more compassion than you do, right? To recognize yourself as the divine miracle that you are really. I mean, you know, I heard um, recently about the uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Now everybody's talking about this, right? The odds of being born are very low. Um, but we learn who we are in relationship to others. And that's where so many people get damaging messages about who they are and that maybe that they're not worthy. So my advice is to allow the, the other message to come through from other people as well. And this often happens to be your partner where, you know, there is that love that kind of forces you to be more vulnerable, to take the risk, to open yourself up to the possibility of the horrible truth that maybe you're not lovable, right? To open yourself up to that when you are, um, that's sort of the challenge. So my sense is that the question that you asked him, like, I just feel like you're settling for me. I would recommend that maybe before just leaving, you come at it from a different perspective. And, and again, because it sounds like you guys aren't talking and it's been a long history and there's been a lot of forgiveness that's had to happen and maybe some is still in progress, my ultimate advice is to get a qualified therapist to work with to help you through this. But short of that, I would just flip the question a little bit. So when you say, 
are you settle? I feel like you're settling for me. I feel like I'm not, you know, I wonder if you feel like I'm not good enough for you, right? Essentially. I would suggest, right? And what does that mean? That means maybe what's the fear? Maybe they'll, that he'll leave or maybe that he doesn't really love you. And, you know, I would suggest that you flip it a little bit and get a little bit softer and get a little bit more vulnerable and say, I really care about you so much. And sometimes I wonder if you feel that way about me. I, I get I get really nervous and I feel like maybe I'm not lovable and and really, you know, get to the heart of how you're really feeling instead of presenting it to him from this kind of walled off place where he really doesn't have much room to navigate. Yes, he could be the bigger person and say, Oh, honey, I love you so much and all the rest, but when you're already caught up in a little bit of a bad pattern together, that can that's asking a lot of him and it's really not his responsibility. He's backed into a corner a little bit by what you're saying. Tara says, I've had my partner say that to me too, that he doesn't deserve me. WTF. It's hurtful to hear at first, angering, even confusing because of the meaning that we assign to their words, behaviors, etc. Awesome. Right. Well, and Tara, you know, I, under, I would imagine it also feels completely invalidating of your experience. And it feels probably like there's miles apart from this. Our meaning comes from our, our wounds. His question comes from his. Beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so the meaning that he, that this got, that your husband is hearing from this, right? That, you know, is, that's his own thing. And, 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 and you know, ultimately, you know, Telling him that he's settling for you is, um, it's just, it, it, it can put him into a different place when it sounds like you've got so much more to share. So that's my, um, my little pop in of the day. I want to thank you, Tara, so much for being here. And, and I'm so glad to have that feedback of yours that this person will hear as well, who's not on the live, obviously, because, you know, I, I, I don't know. But this will be posted on my blog, this video. Thank you for being here. Um, I've been recording these and putting them on my YouTube channel, which has maybe 30 something subscribers, which is, <laughs> it's funny. I was just looking at it. Actually, it's February 1st. And in 2014, I did this thing called Cupid's challenge, 28 days and 28 ways to your best relationship. And some of those videos might be on there and they are embarrassing. But if you like what you're seeing, uh, and you're seeing this on YouTube, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. I hop on live from time to time. I answer questions that come up on my blog over at mybestrelationship.com. And um, yeah, so thank you for being here. Thank you, Tara, as always. I hope you're doing awesome. And I will probably take five minutes to end this video, just like it took me five minutes to start up because of my technical issues. All right. Thank you, everybody. Ciao. I just said ciao. I can't believe that. Okay. Bye. <laughs> I don't usually say ciao. <laughs>